In this video, we're going to look at the definition of a limit and also finding limits numerically and graphically. And we haven't actually defined a limit yet, so I just want to read through this definition. If f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l as x approaches c from either side, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l, and the limit is written in this way. So the interpretation of this of these symbols here is the limit of f of x as x approaches c, which is right down here, is equal to l. And so that l in the last problem that we did regarding the velocity or the slope of the secant line, that l was the actual value of the instantaneous velocity, that value that we approached after we made t sub 2 approach t sub 1. So now we're going to be looking at some specific examples and we're going to start by looking at a graph. And limits can be one-sided or two-sided. You can approach from the left, you can also approach from the right, and so we're going to start by looking at a few scenarios. And if we look at this first, this first graph here, and this is just a piecewise function, and so it, there's a blue part and a red part, but this is all one function, this is f of x. C is just some x value, some interior point, and the limit as x approaches C with a plus sign there means that you approach C from the right, in other words from from values that are larger than C. So if this is your C, we're going to let our x values approach C. And what we care about is we let our x values approach C is what exactly is happening to the y value as that happens. So as x approaches C from, from the positive or from the right, the y values are getting larger and larger. And as we approach C, you can see that the y value is approaching 3. If we approach, if x approaches C from the left, as x approaches c from the left, the y values again are getting larger and larger until we get to 3. Now, x approaches c from the right is equal to 3. x approaches c from the left, from values that are smaller, is equal to 3 and these are one-sided limits. When we don't see a plus sign or a negative sign, that is considered to be a two-sided limit. And in order for a two-sided limit to exist, both the left and the right-hand limits have to be the same. So in this case, since as x approaches c from the left is equal to 3, and x approaches c from the right is equal to 3, the value of x approaches c of f of x is equal to 3 f of c is something that you have already worked with before. That's just function notation for the value of the function at c. And so at c we can see that f of c is actually 3. So here's a scenario where the left hand side and the right hand side limits are the same, which means the two sided limit is the same. And the function value happens to be the same as the limit. Let's look at the next scenario where we have an open circle, meaning that that value doesn't exist. But just because the value doesn't exist doesn't mean a limit doesn't exist. And so the limit as x approaches c from the, from the right, so I'm letting x approach c and my y values are getting larger as that happens. And I'm approaching 3. Even though I never actually hit 3, I'm still approaching it. And as x approaches c from the left, the y values are still also approaching 3, even though they don't hit it. And so since the one-sided limits are the same, the limit as x approaches c is equal to 3. But in this case, f of c, since that's an open circle, it does not exist. So when it does not exist, we just write dne. So we have a scenario where the limit exists, but that limit is not equal to the function value because the function value doesn't exist. So you can have a limit even though there isn't a function value there.
All right, let's look at the next one. The limit, very similar scenario, there's a slight difference. We have an open circle for C at 3 and a closed circle at 4. The limit as X approaches C from the right, as X approaches C, the Y values are getting larger and they are approaching 3. As X approaches C from the left, indicating here by the negative, the Y values are getting larger and they're approaching 3. So since the one-sided limits are the same, the two-sided limit is also equal to 3. F of C exists in this case, but it's not the same value as the limit. F of C is actually 4. Here we have three different scenarios. One where the limit exists, the two-sided limit exists, and it's equal to the function value. Uh, the middle one where the limit, the two-sided limit exists even though the function value doesn't exist. And the third one where the limit exists but the function value is actually different from the limit. So I'm going to scroll down to the next page and just summarize the idea of one-sided limits. So to define one-sided limits, basically if the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left, meaning with this minus sign, if that's equal to L, we call that a left-hand limit. And in the second scenario, the limit as x approaches c from the right, meaning with the little plus sign of f of x equals L, that's called a right-hand limit. And if the left and right-hand limits are equal, then we have what is called a two-sided limit. There is another interactive figure here showing a different function and the idea of a left and right hand limit. So I'm going to open that up. And I've, I've taken the slider, it's up here on the left, and I've moved it all the way to the left. And so we've got this function here, it's a rational function, and we're going to approach 2 from both the left and the right, but this has a nicer visual than what I can draw. And so as we slide our x value towards 2, right, look at the x-axis first, and you see my x value is getting closer and closer to 2. At the same time, you get a nice visual on what's happening to the y value. And so as x approaches 2 from the left, the y value, or the function value, is approaching 3. Now we can also move this from the right, and we'll do the same thing. So now my x value right now is around 3. As I slide my x and I let it approach 2 from the right, you can see that the y value is approaching 3. Alright, feel free to play around with these. They are, you know, the links are there in your documents. And if you hit control click, um, you can get them to open. I also, you know, when you first open it, it's quite small and you can change the you know, the change the zoom on it. I like to go to 200 so I can see it. Alright, so in the first scenario on the last page, we looked at the graph of a function that, that had a hole in it, and here we're going to look at a function that has a jump. And this generally happens when you have piecewise functions. And so If you look up top at this piecewise function, we're going to do three variations of this, basically changing whether you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So we'll look at the first scenario. This is a piecewise function. It's 3 to the x if x is less than x, and that is an exponential function. And it's the, just the f of x equals 5 if x is greater than 1. So for less than 1, we have an exponential function. Greater than 1, we have a constant function. And notice the open circles because there is, there is not an equal sign in either of these. So pause the video and fill out what you think. And I would use pencil in case you make a mistake. But fill out and evaluate these limits and then turn the video back on. Okay, so the first one, 
we've got the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So as I let as I let my x value approach 1 from the right, I'm on the constant function because that function is for values that are greater than 1. So if I'm coming from the right, I'm looking at this line, I'm also looking at this function. And so the y value I'm approaching is actually the same the whole time, it is 5. And then if I look the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, I am actually using the exponential function because that function is for values of x that are less than 1. So coming along the graph as x approaches 1 from the left, the y values are approaching 3. And I would also get that by substituting 1 right in. 3 to the 1 is equal to 3. Now the third is the limit as x approaches 1. Now that is a two-sided limit, and a two-sided limit only exists if the one-sided limits are the same, and since they are different, we have to write does not exist. f of 1, since there is no function value at 1, then f of 1 does not exist. Let's try the second scenario. I'll have you pause the video again and evaluate those limits and the function value and turn the video back on. All right, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, I'm approaching 1 from the right, that is still the constant function and so that would be 5. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left, I'm still using the exponential function coming from the left, and I'm approaching 3. Since the one-sided limits are different, the two-sided limit does not exist. The only difference in this scenario from the first is that f of 1 actually does exist because there's an equal sign there. So in order to find f of 1, we can pull it right off of the graph it's right here, but also we could just find it by putting 1 in to the 3 to the x, so 3 to the 1 is equal to 3. So f of 1 is actually equal to 3. The last scenario, again, change is subtle. The difference is that the equal sign is now with the greater than, and so we'll take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. That means I'm looking at the constant function. As I approach 1 from the right, the limit is 5. As I approach 1 from the left, the limit is 3. Again, the two-sided limit doesn't exist because the one-sided limits are different. And in this case, f of 1 is actually equal to 5 because the equal sign belongs with the constant function so that's just to give you kind of an idea of the difference between left side and right side, comparing it with the function values. And again, just stressing that not only does the limit not have to equal the function value, there doesn't even have to be a function value at C.